What's going on, y'all? I want to talk about what I believe to be the most demonic teaching that's spoken in the church today. And I'm confident it's not what you think I'm going to say. First off, if you could see my beautiful daughter, Eden Nevea. She was born six days ago. I'm bragging about her in all my videos and wearing my little weird toga samurai outfit to be able to hold her because you're supposed to hold babies, turns out. Kind of makes sense since she was in their, her mother's womb for nine months. But anyways, um, so what I want to talk about is <clears throat> the topic that... Lots of preachers today, uh, I'll venture to, I, I don't like to drop names because I don't think that's always beneficial unless you're doing it in a really mature way. I've been watching a lot of Alan Parr stuff lately, and I think he does it in a very tasteful way, actually. Um, but the thing that I want to cover is specifically every preacher that you want to see on YouTube, let me rephrase that, the majority of the preachers that you see on YouTube with over a half a million subscribers and getting lots of views on their video and often do live streaming on their Sunday morning services have great editing that they do to all their thumbnails and stuff like that. Although it sounds like I'm kind of actually describing Alan Parr, I'm not. I'm talking about pastors. Um, for these people, almost all of these people fit in my category that I'm about to refer to. And this is of people who are choosing to speak about you all the time. The trials that you're going through, the tribulations that you're going through, the wrestles that you're having, the anxiety that you're feeling, the, uh, the, the, the temptations that you are wrestling with, the job that you're trying to get, the spouse that you're trying to win back, uh, the job that you're trying to, uh, or, or the, the, the promotion you're trying to get at work, the clarity that you're trying to get on that next move of life. All of these things, although none of them are unbiblical topics and none of those things are unbiblical for you to um, consider, uh, think about, pray about, whatever. The issue that I have is these preachers oftentimes are preaching a very self-serving gospel. What I mean by that is it is a gospel that is all centered around you. It's all beneficial towards you. It is all about how you can have your life better. And what this does is, the reason it's so dangerous and heretical is because not that you're never allowed to pray about your job or not that you're not ever allowed to um, consider the temptations or trials that you're going through. All, again, all of those things are biblical. But when you're only preaching about you all the time, what it does is it creates a gospel that is self-centered. It's Everything is focused around you. You are the focal point of the universe in this gospel. And although if you were to ask one of these preachers, do you believe that I am the focal point of the, obviously every one of them would say no. But it's not necessarily about what they are saying that's wrong. It's about what they're not saying that needs to be said. When we're looking through scriptures, we see that Jesus is constantly glorifying the Father. He's always lifting his eyes up to the hills. He's always considering um, what the Father is, is doing and wanting him to do. It says that Jesus says that he doesn't do anything apart from what the Father tells him to do in John. We as Christians are supposed to be doing and speaking nothing but on the initiative of what God has spoken to us. And again, I don't necessarily mean audible voice or voice in your head. I mean what you see in scripture as well. But these are all things that we are inspired to do by God for God. Everything that we're doing in our life is by God for God. Uh, for the purpose of magnifying his great name. When we look at stories in the Old Testament, like the city of Jericho, and then walking around seven times and the walls falling, we don't see anywhere where any man is taking credit for that. We don't see them, them high-fiving the trumpet players, congratulating them for how great they hit that F sharp. No, they're, they're, they're praising God for what he had done. They understood that everything that had taken place in their life was only by God alone. When we see the, the David and Goliath story, we see that, that, that David, you know, he slays this giant. But they, they, everybody recognizes that God is the one who fought that battle and won that battle. Uh, and, and again, even when we hear David's reason or response for going into battle, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is mocking my God? He, again, he, he, what he's doing is trying to make sure that the name of Yahweh is magnified, not his name. Never after that do you see that he's asking for his name to be written in lights. You never see him ask to be king or any of these things. Those things were granted to him because of his heart that he'd had, right? Uh, we don't see in scripture that, that anyone, uh, I'm trying to think of another great example, uh, Gideon, right? Gideon is another great example where they had the pots and uh, they blew their horns and they broke it and let the fire go. And the 300 men killed all of um, the enemies, or their enemies, or rather their enemies killed all of themselves. They called, killed each other. We don't see after that story that Gideon is taking credit because of how great of a leader and, and, a, and a warlord he was. 
We see after all of these stories that they praised God for winning or fighting their battles for them. I'm using that phrase because that's a very uh, CCM phrase, uh, Christian contemporary Christian music phrase that people use all the time of God fighting my battles. And the issue that I have is I see a lot of Christians are either um, taking responsibility um, for their actions and their why they got that raise at their job because they are such a hard worker or, or, or they got back with their spouse because of how smooth they're talking. Or whatever the case may be, it's all about how good they did and how well they are uh, doing it, it whatever the, the, the example may be. But we see in scripture, all glory is given to God for everything that is done. Yet today, we give ourselves so much credit for all the things that we did and whatnot. Do you see the tremendous difference here? What scripture teaches and what we should be, because remember, when we're talking about reading scripture and stuff like that, we as people should be, first off, teaching people out of the word of God, not out of experience, not out of feelings, not out of what we're going through or anything like that. Again, we can use testimonies from our everyday life and all those things. Those things are extremely important in biblical. Revelation 12 proves that. But we as Christians are supposed to be reading the word of God and teaching out of the word of God. And you can't be using the word of God and getting a whole lot of a you out of it, right? We see the epistles, they talk about how you should live, what you should cut out, what you should prune, what sanctification and righteousness looks like. But again, I'm not seeing a whole lot of that uh, preached in our churches today. I'm seeing a lot, and obviously I'm painting with a broad brush. I want to be clear. I'm not referring to everybody. I'm referring to um, the people who are biggest oftentimes. We are seeing a lot of people who are speaking rather though on topics about how to make your life better, how to make it more comfortable for you, how to make sure that you can deal with your anxiety better. Now, again, to be clear, I'm not somebody who wants you to deal with anxiety or struggle with anxiety, but the solution isn't the three steps to get free from anxiety. Um, the solution is for you to be focused on glorifying God and for you to be loving your neighbor as yourself, right? It's greatest command, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. This right here is what the entire law and the prophets is based on. And if we as Christians are focusing on glorifying God first, and well, and at the same time, I shouldn't say one versus the another, but synonymously focusing on serving the rest of the body of Christ, your anxiety is going to go away. Um, 99% of the time, obviously, I understand that there's a clinical aspect of that where people have a, a chemical imbalance in their brain and stuff like that. I'm not referring to that. Um, or, or the trials that you're going through, the trials and tribulations, the hills and valleys that you're going through. Those things you're not even going to consider. You're not going to think about the hills and valleys in your life. I want to just share on that point a testimony from my life. Um, actually, my beautiful daughter, her mother, um, my wife, her, where her and I were together about, I don't know now, four, three, four, or so years ago. And we were dating and then we got engaged and then we broke up. And uh, when we broke up, it was really tough for all of us. Um, her son called me dad and everything. It was really tough. And um, then after that, we stayed separated for a long period of time, uh, over a year. And then we, I started helping with our youth group. She'd asked me if I'd help with her youth group after she prayed about who to reach out to. And then she reached out to me. And then long story short, we got back together, married, and now we have a baby. Uh, that's the really short version of the story. But anyways, uh, right after we broke up, we broke up in November of whatever the year was. And in December, um, the very end of December 28th, I went on a trip with some friends um, to the Passion Conference. Um, and when we, or no, excuse me, I went to the One Thing Conference in Kansas City, Missouri. And we brought a friend with us who was at the time a non-believer. And when we were there, one of my friends was sharing the testimony of us breaking up. And the dude started cracking up. He's like, shut up, dude, you're an idiot. He's like, no, I'm serious. He's like, they just broke up like last month. He's like, no, they did not. It's impossible. And he's like, how would it be impossible? He's like, because look at Cody. He's like, the joy he has. Like, these are his, his words. The joy he has, like, he doesn't, like, like, he looks like he's perfectly